Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Open Book. I am Billy Price, co-founder of Billy Footwear, and sharing the screen, I have the honor to be with Mr. Darren Donaldson, other co-founder, and uh, he's here for Tech Talk. <laughs> welcome, Tech Darren. Talk. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. It's an honor as always. Um, it's been a little while since my last appearance. Been a lot of great guests since then. And so it's great to be, you know, included in the mix again. And I'm uh, just called out. I'm the other guy. I'm not Darren Donaldson. So let's get it straight. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Well, you know, we got a, a we got a lot of exciting things to talk about. Um, you know, one thing that we just launched today was uh, our wider yeah. kids and toddler high tops. Now, there's a lot yeah. to talk about that, but before we jump into that, I was hoping that we could kind of uh, turn the clock back a little bit, kind of back it up and talk about um, a little bit of the history and maybe a little shoe 101, because I know that, mm. you know, we've been friends forever. I mean, we really have. And right. uh, when we reconnected in really 2012, which was a conversation that later became Billy Footwear, um, I pitched a shoe idea to you just basically saying like, you know what, if we put a zipper in a shoe where it wraps around the toe and exposes the footbed, I bet I'd have a fighting chance to put my shoes on again. Yeah. And uh, I remember when I told you that idea, you started throwing all these shoe terms at me of which I did not understand. Talking about outsole, talking about upper, talking about midsole, talking about, you know, heel counter, talking about, you know, all these different components. And yeah. uh, that was just talk about the shoe itself. But then again, beyond that is to be able to talk about the process of actually making a shoe. So before we really jump into the new shoes we just launched, I was hoping we could have a little bit of a, like a shoe 101 to walk sure. us through some of the components that actually go into a shoe. Yeah, and it's surprising, you know, that for all of us, we've worn shoes our whole life and you, you know about some of the components, but you may not know everything that goes into it. And so when I started in footwear, it was really a learning process and I know it has been for you as well. Um, so I'll just kind of walk through just with our classic high top and touch on some of the components that are involved with our shoe um, and then kind of expand from there for that might be used in other styles. So as we all know, there's we know usually the outsole. So in, the, in our version, this is actually called a cup sole. And the reason for that is that if you took the top part, the upper of the shoe off, it actually has like a cup. You could pour water in it and it would hold it. So that's what this is called. It's a cup sole. And. And so this is the just the outsole that on some shoes, say like our jogger, the outsole is here, what you see in the gray. And the, but here is what's called a midsole. So this is an, a die cut EVA midsole is what's on this on the jogger and with a rubber outsole tread. Back to our classic high top. So any part that's above the outsole on any shoe is called an upper. So that's this entire part. That's what covers your foot. So when you're making the shoe, it's the upper is built around what's called a last. And so you may have seen those out there, whether it's wood or some kind of a, an acrylic um, material. It, it's the shape of a foot. And that's really how the pattern of the entire shoe is built around that shape of the foot and how they get a consistent size and fit. And then they grade them up per size so that it's proper volume and length and width accordingly and, and keep to the standard for wherever you are, whether U.S. sizing, U.K., E.U., etc. So as they build the pattern pieces around that, um, they actually construct it all over, you know, with those pattern pieces that were were designed and measured off of that last. And then they have to do what's called in our shoe. Uh, it's a it's it's a strobel bed right here or strobel board, also known as a last board. And the reason why they call it that is because this is the bottom piece that brings the whole upper together that they can then pull it all over the last and then they can affix the outsole to the upper at that point in time. So with our shoe, it's called a cement construction because it's cemented, the outsole cemented to the upper, which is, you know, it's, it's a, a pretty common one, especially in lifestyle, casual shoes, sports shoes. Um, they use that type of construction. And so, what you really know and can see, it might be tough to see on this version, but you can really see how that outsole, there's no gap or anything. It's because that's all gut adhesive and cement there. So really that, that, that board, that last board there is, is only after the fact, just a little bit of a border between your foot and the, in this case, the outsole. 
Um, and in this cup sole, as we, you know, Billy, um, there are some cavities in the base of it. So it's like a waffle cavity. Now that's done really to remove the material so that it's lighter, um, but can still provide the support. But we'll get into that later, how we've, you know, dealt with that and seen, seen some things with the way this is constructed. Now, talking through the upper, so this little piece right here is what you would call a heel counter. So, and then there's also an internal heel counter, which you've probably felt in your shoes before, that provides that rigidity and that more sta stability and support in the heel. The same can go around on, on the toe. So this is, this is a toe cap, um, but if you had one internally, it was called a toe puff, and that's what caused, that's that more rigid feel that you have in some of the shoes I'm sure that you wear. Um, we don't have a toe puff in our shoes because of the way our, our zipper is placed. But what we do in that case is we actually add in an additional layer of material to, to kind of be in place of that toe puff, even though it's not quite as rigid, but it allows for this, this piece right here to remain relatively rigid. Now, when you get up to, obviously, we all know the laces, and then the, the eye stays is, the, is actually right here which is the part that has the eyelets, which is the metal pieces that we've all seen. Some call them grommets, but this in, in shoes, it's called eyelets. And then the, the pattern that holds those is called an eye stay. And then of course, it's just kind of the side, side panel is the piece that's on the side. Um, this whole part is actually called a vamp um, in, in the footwear space. Um, <clears throat> and then up on the top is the top line or the throat of the shoe. And so that's kind of a really quick run through. Um, hopefully, if you have, if I miss something, please point it out. Um, trying to do a quick tutorial for those out there watching. Well, the thing is, I mean, I got to touch on how you started. You talked about how, you know, we all wear, we're all wearing shoes, but we don't necessarily right. know the components. And I mean, you just rattled through all those components and whatnot. And it's just like, it gave me flashbacks of those initial conversations going, oh man, slow down. Like, this is incredible. Like how many how many points go into a shoe that we wear right. every single day. Now, each one of those points, of course, I mean, there's a process of which, how it gets constructed. I mean, for example, mm -hmm. something that blew my mind and looking back on this now, it's like, I didn't, I was surprised I didn't think about this before, but the outsole actually kind of goes last. It's like everything else is built and the outsole goes on. Right. And I mean, I was just kind of thinking of it more of maybe like a house where you start with the foundation and then you build up, but it just doesn't work that way. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. The first time I developed shoes, it was actually a boot and I received them separately. And so it looked like I had a bunch of moccasins with these outsoles and then they needed to be cemented together. Now, that was my first time knowing that, oh, this is done at the last step or phase of the actual uh, production. So, yeah, it's, it's really interesting what you learn and how much really does go in. And this is just talking through our style. I mean, there's a variety of other styles like you'd see on Vans. It's a vulcanized outsole, which is a whole different process, which is like heat treatment, which has bonding from the outsole to the upper. Same thing goes for injected molding. It's a similar type of a deal where it's, it's bonding to the upper as opposed to an adhesive or cement. So, and then you get into dress shoes and there's welting type, type construction. And so you can go on and on. And it's just amazing that these things that we've worn every day of our life and I didn't know this until I was in my thirties, you know, back. <laughs> and that's now, kind of crazy, <laughs> crazy to think, you know? <laughs> right. No kidding. Um, well, it's never a good time to, it's always a good time to learn something new. That's what I always say. Um, Most definitely. So when it comes to the actual process though, of putting that together, I mean, there's the actual construction process, but there's also the, the design and development process to be able to basically start the machine, to be able to allow the manufacturer to make a sample Right. before we can improve it and then move forward. Can you talk on that? Yeah, so there's a lot of different steps that go into it. Um, and really where you want to start with is you want to figure out what kind of a construction or outsole that you're looking to have developed. And then you you find then the last that is going to work for the, the shape and the gender that, of course, you're making them for. So that's the first step. So once you're able to find that last that works, you go through the process of doing a design uh, a CAD design of what the outsole should be. So all the specs, sizing, and you usually do it at a, depending on what gender, there's a specific size that you do the measurements for. Um, and that can take, you know, up to six weeks sometimes. 
uh, just for that step. And then once you get there, you're, you're building out, like I said, the pattern pieces from the design that you have to put together. And usually we do it in rendering form um, with whether it's Illustrator or some other CAD uh, program. And that that's a little bit quicker because once they actually have the last, they can do the pattern in the upper within like two to two to three weeks, depending on who you're working with. But overall, you can hear how that takes already two months, roughly. And that's if you're, you know, going about it at a pretty good pace and you know what you're wanting and you're not, you know, going back and forth. Um, once you get there, you have the first prototypes made. Make sure that the fit and everything looks right. You make some modifications. And again, if it goes well, you know, you're looking at getting true confirmation samples made, which will be another three to three to four weeks. And so now we're roughly three months into it. And then you can actually decide to move forward um, with placing the order. And then there's lead times, depending on where you're making them um, in the world and where you're located. Um, it usually is about a 90 to 120 day turnaround um, because cons accounting for the transit within that 90 to 120 days. So for us, it would be 90 day development, then an additional 30 days for transit. So all in all, that whole process has been about seven months yeah. from, from start to finish. And that's if there aren't any hiccups or roadblocks. So okay. it can be, it can be a long process. And, and so that's why I know I'm really excited that we finally got our wide with option for kids. Cause you know, and I know that we've been working for at this one, actually a little bit longer than that time period I just mentioned. So yeah, uh, yeah pretty, pretty exciting to be here. <laughs> Well, exactly. I mean, and, and I mean, just to touch on before we jump into that, to touch on some of those lead times. I remember when we first started talking about it in my mind, because of the lack of understanding in my mind, the lead time in my I was thinking was the lead time to have the actual to get it into the queue for them to build the shoes. But a lot of that lead time was dictated by the materials, getting the materials, getting the components. I mean, all that stuff, getting the boxes, all that stuff, you know, <laughs> that all comes with the time frame. It does. And if you if you don't know the schedule on the front end, you can really delay yourself by not timing it out and, and doing things, you know, running in parallel. And that's that's what we've learned throughout the years. And we're getting better and more streamlined at it. But there's still with our shoes, there's a little more complication because of our zipper and placement and, and figuring out the fit and uh, how that's going to best function for the end user once once we actually have the shoe made. So, yeah. So it's pretty yeah. exciting, though. We're going to test out the W, the, the wide widths, and look forward to getting into those components and what we've addressed, and 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 how this is the first generation of. We know, um, you know, there's going to be other generations coming, which we'll be excited to do, evolve yeah. as well. So, well, definitely. I mean, let's jump into it. I mean, we, sure. we kind of you showed off the kind of the components of more of the classic high top. Um, if you can do a comparison between the classic high top and some of the the considerations we took when developing the WDR, um, right. I think that'd be great. Yeah, most definitely. And so just before we get into that, the one thing that I didn't mention that I think we all know is the insole. So that was one thing I didn't call out, but um, I think that's something all of us already knew. Um, so that is starting there, that's one of the differences. So on our classic standard high top, we have just one insert. Now it's they're all removable. Uh, but it's a six millimeter insert there because it's a kid's shoe. We don't have a lot of form or structure to it because that's, that's usually meant or used for adults. Um, but in the WD or the wide width option, we actually have two inserts. So we have two, three millimeter inserts. And the reason for this is that it allows for that extra depth adjustability because our shoes, we found out after we entered the marketplace, a lot of a lot of kids wearing AFOs or other braces um, have found our, our our shoes to be very useful and functional because they can finally put on a high top. It's they have the independence to be able to do it themselves. The, they don't have to sh shove their foot in with this plastic L of a brace. Um, but part of that is they need more depth, and you know depending on what type of brace it is, that depth varies obviously. So this allows for that, you know, multiple multiple options. Um, in the in the wide width shoe that we put together. Now another brief thing I'll touch on that you can't really tell from the photo or from the, the video is we do have the same cup outsole but what we've done is we've used the most durable rubber composite we can in the wide width. Now the reason for that is because some kids are working through 
uh, correcting their gait. And so they could have a real rough heel strike or toe strike or drag. And so we did this to hopefully ensure that it will be more durable and last longer for the kids that, that are working through their gait. Um, <clears throat> and for toddlers that are, you know, still crawling around a little bit as well. So they're dragging their toe. Um, another thing that we find is really important. So with the kids wearing braces, they were wearing through our lining in our classic high top. It's hard to see in the video, but this is a real, it's a real nice, soft linen um, textile material, but, you know, it just would not win the battle against plastic or metal. So to address that, we had to still deal with it being comfortable, so it can't be too rigid. But what we've done is we did a material that has a lot more depth to it, a much more uh, thicker weave. And I, you can probably kind of see the texture there. And so we really, we've tested it out and we know this is going to last a lot longer. It still will lose the battle over time, but it, it should last to what we think is a re respectable length of time for those that have the, the braces, especially ones that have the joints on them. Uh, another thing um, relating to kind of the wear that comes from the, the braces is, um, if, especially those that have that big heel strike, is that the this last board or strobel board that we have you can hear kind of this is on our classic and then what we did is we tried to do one that's a lot more tough you can hear right this is made out of different material it's a little bit thicker but still has that flexibility for comfort so we really feel confident that's going to help mitigate that failure from any type of aggressive heel striking um, <clears throat> in addition one thing that has happened because of the additional volume we built up the upper to have the toe, if you can see them side by side, how, how our toe on the wide width, it goes up more and back. And we feel like this could really help because there's been toe drag that has compromised the zipper around the toe at times. And we think that this will help mitigate. We know it won't eliminate it, but it should mitigate it for most, most, most kids wearing braces that have that toe drag, or even if they just have the toe drag without a brace. Um, <clears throat> And then part of it that we we know that is unique about our shoe is we had a special last built for our wide width. So it's not this isn't a standard wide width shoe for kids. We had we made sure that there's additional width in the heel um, to account for the brace wear. Um, but we also had the additional width in the toe box, which is not unusual. But we also had more volume built up in the vamp area and up to the throat. <clears throat> and we feel that this will really help a lot of kids, whether they're wearing braces or if they just have a very voluminous or, you know, a lot of girth to their feet. Um, and we're just really excited. We've already had some out there testing it and it seems to be really hitting the mark. And it's a delicate balance to go too, too much volume, too much width, because <clears throat> one, most kids are only wearing a brace on one foot. So that means their other foot is just without a brace and we can't have it just in there moving around and swimming around too much. So we think we found that nice balance. It won't be able to address those that have the biggest end of the spectrum as far as braces, um, but we think that we're going to accommodate hopefully 90 plus percent. That's the goal. So, so, so. I mean, yeah, all that stuff was incredible. And, and one of the things I did want to touch on was when you mentioned the last, I mean, typically yeah. when, you know, again, like with my understanding, like going through this, it's been so awesome learning about all these components, but you know, the last you talk about a wider shoe, like typically when a wider shoe is constructed, it's it's more of a it's a foot. It's a foot that's kind of built out a little bit to to make the wider shoe. Whereas the development process for this project, it took significantly longer because we had to create a last of which had never been created before. It was based on, you know, dimensions right. of AFOs that were given to us and SMOs that were given to us to be able to kind of get an understanding of what a good target shape could be and then working directly at the factory to be able to create that shape. Right. Yeah. And, and we started the first sample or prototype we had was with standard wide width for kids. And we kind of worked from there to see, okay, where, where are the pressure points based off of this? And so we just built it out adding, you know, millimeter or two here. It's amazing what it sounds like it's small amounts, but when you build it out over the entire shape, it can really add a lot of volume. So it, there is several, I want to say probably four prototypes back and forth, which is why it 
like I mentioned, the time frame on that, why it took us a lot longer, roughly a year, once we actually started the development, um, once we found a factory that was willing to take on this project, because not every factory is willing to do a special type construction and last like that, um, unfortunately, but we were, fortunately, we're able to find find that factory and we're, we're excited to be working with them yeah. on this project. Yeah. yeah. And then the thing about it, though, is uh, even with all of those um, components that are slightly different, it still embodies the same DNA that's consistent with all of our shoes. It has the wrapper right. and zipper. It has the functional laces. It has the branding components, which is, mm -hmm. you know, which is fantastic. Yes, and I know that <clears throat> what people will notice is that we, we're only launching with a limited color selection right now. And I know we want to address this on the front end that we're, we're aware of that, but we did try to choose kind of the most common, you know, colorways that we know would at least be the, you know, the big winners that we've seen historically, I guess, in our, in our like standard canvas colorways. But the plan is this is first generation. We're, we're going to get them out there. There are minimum order requirements for each colorway, which is why we couldn't just go crazy with it. And we wanted to test it out, see if we need to make any modifications, get a true gauge on the demand out there. And then once we have that, data back we're hoping for second generation to be able to make some tweaks but also expand on the colorway so the kids that need these shoes could have some more fun stuff like our our standard classic i mean for me a gray high top's fun but for some kiddos they want something you know like a tie-dye or or you know who knows something something crazy <laughs> glittery like this you know which which is a a lovely shoe. We just haven't come out with it in the, in the wide width yet. Um, but we're really excited to get that feedback. So, and I, as we talk about that, feedback is always welcome. So direct all your feedback to Billy and he will send it my way. <laughs> well, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. And it, you know, you, we talk about the expansion of the colorways, but uh, mm -hmm. you know, sizing considerations too. Right. Well, for sure. So, Part of the second generation, we plan on building up, building the shoes up so that those kids that are growing out of kid sizes can can have another couple or few years being able to wear our shoes. So we're we're not sure how far we're going to build it up, but we're hoping to be able to offer an additional three to four sizes um, in this wide width option for the kids. And then from all the data we learn, <clears throat> we will actually start developing for men's and women's. Um, the, a wide width option in our in our classic high top look, um, but that <clears throat> that's a whole different development project because full grown women and men actually their their feet shape changes, and so we can't use exactly what we're doing for the kids, and so it's going to be going through that process again for each the men and the women's. But that is in the pipeline. It's just going to be piggybacking off of our second generation of the kids. Right. Right. <clears throat> yeah. So, I mean, a lot of, I mean, th this, this launch with uh, the wider toddler and the wider, the wider kids, I mean, the, on our website, so WDR, WDR, which stands for wider, deeper, and more resilient with that fabric in there. And right. uh, there are a number of places you can find it on the website. Um, so if you go to billyfootwear.com, there is a collection that specifically says wider shoes, but also if you go to just all shoes um, on the left-hand side, if you're on a laptop or a desktop, um, there is a filter in there that you can select the wider kid shoes and also the wider adult shoes too. I mean, there are some wider adult shoes on there. They're more the comfortable, right. but uh, that's one way to find it on a mobile. Um, if you, again, if you go to all shoes, there is a filter that you can find the wider shoes. So that's just one way to find it. Our retail partners are picking up the shoes as well. Um, they don't necessarily have them in store quite yet, but because uh, they just launched. Mm -hmm. But I mean, that's, that's a big expansion that we've been just looking forward to bringing to you guys for quite some time, but there's also other expansions in the works too. So right. I was hoping Darren could share, um, kind of a, uh, give a little sneak peek of some things, some other projects. projects. Yeah. And I don't want to steal the excitement that I have for the wide with high top. You have no idea what Billy and I have done to get this to happen. So we're really thrilled and excited, but these other new developments that are underway, um, we're in various stages, but we're excited. We're coming out with a, what we're calling our Billy sport line. And so we actually are coming out with a running shoe. Now, for those of you that have followed our brand, you know we have our classic jogger, which is more of a retro look with the die cut EVA midsole construction. 
but what we're doing is it's going to be an actually, you know, a, a molded EVA, like a normal running shoe that you'd find out there with any other brands, you know, the big, the big dogs out there, we won't name them, but they're, they're in the Northwest as well. Um, <laughs> however, so, so that's in the works. We're excited. It's looking to be a late spring launch in 21, uh, for that running shoe. And it's one that I, I'm really think looks great. And I'm just really excited to see how they perform. And, and we're pretty, op- we're pretty optimistic with how we've put it together. And it's going to be really exciting to have that out there for our customers and, and expand our offering. Um, another two that we have just had a major, major amount of requests for, and we did, we do listen. So we heard you, um, but we're on the very front ends of developing a true cold winter boot. Um, so we're excited for that. That's underway. Um, that's, and then also on top of that, we're going to be at, or at the same time, we're developing a true rain boot. And so those, those have been like the top two requests beyond the wide width requests. And it's just really exciting. We are on the front end, but we're hoping that this time next year, we'll be able to launch both of those. So hold Billy to that. And if it doesn't happen, then, you know, we know who to blame. <laughs> but seriously, though, we are really excited and we are, we're pretty optimistic it will be here this time next year. Well, I love how you touched on, um, you know, the, these are requests that customers have had, and uh, so many of the so many so many of the components that went into the WDR, and even components into our classics. I mean, a lot of it had to do from customer feedback, and mm-hmm. uh, I, I loved how you touched on that. Uh, we listen to the customer. I mean, unfortunately, we can't accommodate everything immediately, but uh, your requests are just vital to the development mm-hmm. of future lines and uh, just the just the success of this brand to be able to continue to expand and be able to meet those needs. So uh, just, you know, please keep giving that feedback, give suggestions. And uh, I don't know, Darren, I would just kind of like, I, before I sign us off, I just kind of let you um, just open mic yeah. right here, but I'm sure you would concur that how vital that um, that feedback is. It, it really is. And, and just, don't be hesitant. You know, we're not even if you're trying out the wide width or even our classic shoes, if you had feedback on what you think could actually help improve it, if there's issues you're having, or even if you have ideas of like, hey, you guys should try a new style and, and you want to give us some examples. I mean, we, we do listen. Our customer service team is great about passing it along to to me and our product development team. Um, and so, you know, just keep keep piling in the, the information and the feedback and we're going to do our best. But as we mentioned before, the time frame on the development is a little is is rather long, so uh, be patient and know that we are listening and we hear you and we we tr- we just have to prioritize and we can't develop everything at the same time. But we we definitely uh, go off of what we're hearing the most and we make sure that we make put that at the top of the list. So please keep reaching out um, and yeah, and hopefully these shoes work for you and you love them. And um, this time next year, I hope you feel the same about what our boots that we're going to land with. So, yeah, pretty exciting sure. times. And even in this strange year, you know, we've tried to keep charging forward and I'm pretty excited that we've made this progress. So I think about when we first started this brand, we had six pairs of shoes. That was in 2016. And uh, we have a lot more now. So. We have a lot more now. <laughs> <laughs> been, been pretty crazy to watch. And we're just really thankful for all the support we've had out there with our customers and you know we just can't express the gratitude we have for for the loyal customers and and just look forward to providing solutions for all of you moving forward that work and and keep evolving the line so well said well said very cool well i appreciate you having me back on billy yeah thank you darren thank you for all the input of course everyone this was another episode open book and a special episode of tech talk so We'll see you next week for another episode.